All right, thank you very much for your uh, introduction. So I'm Ahmed Kandal, a PhD student at uh, Oklahoma State University. I'm currently working under the supervision of Dr. Mohamed Saliman, and today I'm gonna to talk about multi-hazard risk analysis of bridges considering climate change. So uh, let's take a look at the contents of my presentation. I will start with a brief introduction, then I'll continue my discussion with climate modeling and flood and scour prediction. And then after that, I will be talking about corrosion deterioration, risk assessment, and risk assessment. And finally, uh, I will apply all of these uh, to an illustrative example. And uh, I will wrap up my presentation with some uh, conclusions. So uh, as you know, bridges are one of the most important components of uh, ground transportation systems. And then failure may have uh, significant effects on the economy of a, a region or even a nation. So there are different sources of uh, deterioration of bridges. Some of them are leading to gradual deterioration, and some of them are leading to uh, sudden failures. Uh, and here I have listed the main causes of bridge failure, and as you see, more than 50% of these failures are because of the uh, hydraulic related causes, which among those, uh, more than 90% are because of flood and flood induced scour. Uh, so, uh, NOAA reported that uh, since 1960s, we got uh, over 600% increase in the number of floods in the United States. Also, NOVA reported that this uh, increase in this percentage may, may continue in the future. And uh, because of this increase, which is attributed to climate change, uh, so we may face some problems with our uh, bridges and our infrastructures. And therefore, the traditional design methods uh, of bridges or structures in general and the return period methodology like the 50 50-year flood or 500-year flood or 100-year flood may not be reliable anymore. Uh, in the other hand, we have the uh, corrosion effects, uh, which basically this is also considerable. So the annual direct and indirect costs of uh, corrosion do, uh, to highway bridges is estimated as 1% of uh, nation's GDP in the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, also climate change can affect the corrosion deterioration. Uh, this uh, basically uh, affect, this effect uh, can be through the carbon dioxide concentration or temp change in the temperature or the long-term changes in humidity. And uh, in addition to all of these, I mean the corrosion and flood and scour effects, we have the, uh, the earthquake effects also, uh, which again, the analysis of bridge failures between 1980s to 2012 indicate that the earthquake events are among the hazards that they, loot, uh, they lead to most causes. And uh, in recent years, due to deep wastewater, deep wastewater disposal in some regions in uh, Oklahoma and uh, some regions in Texas and uh, even Arkansas, uh, so we got some uh, basically increase in the seismicity of the regions. And now because of that, uh, as an example, for example, in some places in Oklahoma, we have uh, a chance of having a damaging earthquake like uh, some regions in California, which we haven't really designed our structure in the past for these kind of events. And we really need to think about that and uh, basically consider that in our design and in our analysis uh, for the future. So uh, due to the, the significance of each of these events, I mean the flood, the scour, corrosion, and uh, earthquake, and also the possibility that we may get two or more of these hazards at the same time, uh, we need to do uh, multi-hazard risk analysis or uh, risk assessment. And as a result of that, we can come up with the time-dependent risk profile, and based on that 
uh, risk profile, we can perform maintenance optimization, we can uh, get the optimum maintenance plans and inspection plans. So um, in here, I have shown a kind of a general flowchart of this, um, uh, the whole process, which we start with adopting the global climate models and also the USGS hazard maps. And then after that, we do the structural analysis and we evaluate the consequences of failure. And then we end up with the risk profile. And then based on that risk profile, we can uh, perform the uh, maintenance optimization. But uh, today, I'm going to uh, focus on a, a part of this general framework, which basically considers uh, multi hazard risk analysis of bridges under uh, flood, flood induced scour, and corrosion. And as a result, I would end up with the time uh, dependent risk profile. So, uh, as a first step of such analysis, we use global climate models or GCMs to predict future climate behavior. So in case of using this method, uh, a combination of different scenarios um, which uh, should be used. Uh, so these, are, these can be different model types, different future greenhouse gas emission scenarios, and different downscaling techniques. Uh, and then after that, using that data that we adopt from the global climate models, we need to perform a stream flow modeling because those data are only precipitation and temperature or the other you know, climate data, but we cannot get the, uh, the stream flow or the discharge uh, directly from the model, so we need to perform a stream flow pre, uh, uh, modeling. So in general, uh, we have three types of model, metric models conceptual models or physical based models. Either of these methods can be used for performing a stream flow analysis uh, prediction. Uh, in this study, we use the hybrid conceptual metric tool to perform the uh, flood prediction. So uh, this model uses uh, a statistical analysis to calibrate the uh, stream flow prediction model. So it basically uh, establishes a relationship between the observed precipitation, observed temperature, and the observed stream flow data. And then using that relationship that we get from the historical data, then we adopt the, uh, the precipitation and temperature data from the global climate models. And using that relationship, we can end up with uh, basically future stream flow prediction. Uh, so after finding the uh, uh, the flood peaks or flood prediction, we need to uh, perform time dependent scour analysis. So, for this goal, we have different uh, methods or models. Uh, in here, I just listed two of them. One of them is a bridge scour assessment, which has been presented by Briad at 2009. And then another one is HEC 18 equation or method, which is a pretty common uh, and widely used uh, method. So in this study, we use uh, the first one, the bridge scour assessment method. So uh, in general, as the main inputs of the uh, scour models, we need to input the water velocity and the water depth. And uh, most of the people, they just use the, I mean, most of the, in most of the research that I've seen, they just use the empirical equations. And, uh, but this may not be accurate for all of the cases because you know, we have different types of channels, we have different types of river beds. So uh, we use the curve fitting technique uh, to basically solve this problem. So we, we got the observed data in the last 60 years for the water velocity, water depth, and discharge, and we uh, established the relationship between them. And then for corrosion assessment, uh, we use the freshwater corrosion loss model recommended by Eurocode 3 part 5. Uh, the recommended data for the, uh, for the freshwater is used to establish a, a time dependent relationship of corrosion loss and, uh, you know, versus time. So in here I've shown that. And then uh, the lateral load carrying capacity and the axial load carrying capacity of the piles uh, should be considered. So uh, for the lateral load carrying capacity, we use the Zhang et al. model. And then for the axial uh, capacity, we use a pretty common uh, 
you know, procedure which uh, we take the summation of axial capacity, shaft capacity, and teeth capacity of pies, and we find the axial capacity. And then, uh, uh, then we need to find the cumulative uh, probability of failure. Uh, so for that one, we use the first, uh, we got the point in time probability of failure, and based on that, we uh, basically accumulate that, and we got the uh, cumulative probability of failure, and then after that, we evaluated the consequences of failure based on the model uh, by Stein et al. And then using the evaluated consequences and the probability of failure, we end up with the risk profile. So uh, let's kind of review what we have done so far. So let's assume that we want to do our analysis uh, for, a for uh, finding the risk profile of the bridge under flood and flood-induced scour. As the first step, we adopt the global climate models uh, and we perform our uh, flood prediction. And uh, after that, uh, we find the time-dependent scour depth profile and um, then we evaluate the consequences of failure and we find the um, probability of failure, and then finally we can find the risk, time-dependent risk profile. And then on the other hand, if we have uh, the case under uh, flood, scour, and corrosion, again, we will have a pretty similar uh, procedure. We only need to integ integrate the effect of corrosion, which uh, you can see the layout of this uh, procedure in here. So uh, we applied this uh, framework to an existing bridge in uh, the border of Oklahoma and Texas. Is, this bridge is located on I-35 Highway or Red River. Uh, uh, it has an average daily traffic of uh, about 20,000 vehicles per day and more than 7,000 trucks per day. So uh, it's one of the main freight routes of, uh, you know, of this region from north to south and so south to north. So in 2015, uh, we got a, a very severe flood in this area. So uh, the water level uh, almost reached the superstructure of the bridge, and this is kind of explains why we chose this bridge as an example for our study. Uh, so this bridge is constructed from several bridge piers. Each, bridge, each pier has two pile groups underneath. Each pile group has nine different piles, or nine piles, not especially different, but nine pipes. Uh, the detail is shown here. And then uh, in this study, we use the downscale CMIP5 um, database, and we use the BCCA uh, downscaling method. So different model types uh, and in combination with different uh, RCP values or different scenarios for greenhouse gas emission, are used so totally it end up with uh, we ended up with nine different uh, climate scenarios so in here I have shown uh, the adopted data for 140 years that started from uh, 1960 to 2100 uh, for the temperature and precipitation and then uh, as I mentioned we use that hybrid statistical model to perform the stream flow analysis. So here I have shown the, uh, the calibration process and if we take a closer look to one of the years this, which is year 2007 we see a pretty good match between them and then using that relationship that we established uh, here we can end up with the stream flow profile based on the models that we adopted before. And uh, uh, one question that you might have in your mind is how do we know that in the future we get more severe floods, right? So in here I uh, plotted the, the annual data based on all of the nine climate models that I adopted and uh, I plotted all of them. Now let's take out the mean and the maximum values for based on these models. So as you see we have two trend lines. One of them is decreasing which is uh, the mean or the average based on all of uh, the model, all of the nine models, and one of them is de is increasing and it's the maximum, which means that, however, in the long term, we'll get less amount of water generally, but we get more severe peaks or more severe floods. And this is again kind of explain why we need to perform such analysis and you know consider different scenarios. So in here, I've shown the uh, result for time dependent scour based on all all of the models. Again, you see uh, there is a considerable difference between the models. 
And in here, um, we have the axial and lateral uh, capacities the, uh, based on the, I mean, versus time. So you see that uh, there is a considerable decrease in the capacities. We got almost 50% capacity for the lateral load and uh, over 30% capacity for the axial loads, which kind of tells us that the failure of the bridge is more likely to happen based on the lateral road than the axial load. And then as a uh, main outcome of the, uh, I mean, this uh, process, uh, I've plotted two risk profiles, one of them for the bridge under the scour and flood, and another one for the bridge under the scour, flood, and corrosion. And you see that, again, there is a considerable difference between these two, so the effect of corrosion can uh, basically increase the time-dependent risk by 70%, uh, which is a, uh, a big number. And uh, I have a few conclusions which uh, I've already mentioned them, but I want to highlight them now. So as I mentioned, the time dependent scour depths uh, significantly depends on the type of the model that we use. We, we have seen over 30% uh, difference between different models. And then uh, I mentioned that uh, we uh, basically, in general, we got uh, less amount of water, but we got more severe or more uh, extreme events. And then uh, we also have seen that the corrosion can affect, uh, can change the risk profile significantly. And here are my references. And I would be happy to answer any question or concern. Well, uh, we, we, we performed the analysis for the piles or the pile groups, and we assume that each of the, these events that would uh, happen would basically make the failure, the system would collapse. I mean, we assume the safe system between the corrosion and uh, the flood and the, the, the effect of a scour and flood, yes. So it's kind of, you know, they're kind of equally weighted. But at the same time, they have like different uh, you know, random parameters. So each, then the analysis has been done on a ba daily basis. So basically it has been done uh, for more than 50,000 days. So each day has its own uh, flood, its own uh, scour, and its own corrosion. So uh, your risk is by itself a random parameter. Yes, yes. It, it's a result. It's not a real random parameter, but it's, it's a result of a bunch of random parameters. So which part of them are for estimating the you know the costs, and part of them are coming from the extraction analysis, and flood prediction, and you know by integrating all of these together, so you would end up with kind of a random you know risk profile. But since we have different models, we have like, let's say nine different models in here. So we take the mean. So we kind of, you know, uh, basically uh, divide that uncertainty, you know, in a smaller scale. Thanks. Sorry, I couldn't hear you.
they, they, no. they, they lose their uh, lateral capacity by almost 50% at the end of the service life, yeah. uh, at the end of the analysis, which is 140 years. So what kind of pile? Pre-stress pile? Or no, pile? this is like the edge piles. The edge the, piles. Yeah, steel piles. The, the sea is corroding, so, and this is, you know, like freshwater corrosion, so the effect is not that much that, you know, it's like two millimeters that after like 100 years or so. So, okay. it's not that serious. I would like to conclude uh, uh, this uh, session uh, inviting, uh, thanking everybody for participating.